While the Spurs were still getting ready to play, the general manager was telling reporters about San Antonio's bad boy. It has been uh, mutually agreed upon by both the Spurs and Dennis Rodman that he will be granted a leave of absence for personal reasons. Free John Starks. The other guard, six four from Illinois. With that out of the way, San Antonio would have a lot to prove against the bad boys of the East, the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks missed winning the world title last year by a scant seven points. Many feel if they'd have had the home court advantage, they would be this year's NBA champions. That's what Pat Riley's got the Knicks thinking about this year, getting the home court advantage throughout the playoffs. But it became evident early on San Antonio had something to prove. Perhaps to fans, perhaps to management, perhaps to itself. As the PA cranks up the sounds of ACDC, the Spurs hit hard and early. You know, we don't want to shout too loud yet. We want to sneak up on people. I, I tell you that much, but um, uh, really this game tonight was for us. Um, <laughs> then the play of the year in this short NBA season, an errant pass no one could control except the Admiral. David, were you making a statement with that dunk at the end? <laughs> Uh, I tell you, I was just having fun with that one. He he threw it up. I just I just went up and uh, and tried to do something special with it. How about that dunk at the end? It was awesome. That's you know I I said that's probably the best dunk I've ever seen in person uh, in a game. I've seen guys um, do lots of dunks um, in dunk contests and everything, but in a game it's different. And that was that was probably the greatest dunk I've ever seen. San Antonio was never behind as they routed the defending Eastern Conference champions by 20. Knicks coach Pat Riley is not used to such blowouts. It's a nice team. Bob's done a great job with that group of guys. We've got some size in the guard positions. We've got some real good shooters. We've got a hell of a post-up player. And that includes the old man of basketball, the legendary Moses Malone. With David Robinson, the one of the greatest centers in the league. Uh, He's playing great. He's doing a great job. And uh, our concern is winning ball games. Well, you're no slouch yourself, uh, obviously. I, I, do you feel younger uh, coming here? Are you content with uh, the, with the way you're playing and your role? Well, you know, I know, I know what I got to do. You know, my, my attitude is got to work hard and try to contribute to the team as a ball player, not as an individual. Uh, my concern is to help the San Antonio Spirit win all the games we can win. I am having fun this year. I, I had fun last year too, but this is a, a different team. This team is is more of a team, and I'm having fun because. The guys are having fun. I'm having fun because we're working together, and, uh, and, and the game is much easier for me. All-star Patrick Ewing got two fouls and a tee just 25 seconds into the game. They definitely had more tested than us. Uh, they got the job done. We didn't. But before the season is over, the Knicks will probably get it done. We'll take a closer look at the New York Knicks tomorrow night. From the Alamo Dome, Dave Johnson, Newswatch 10. At one guard, 6'5", from Oklahoma State, number three, John Starks. The other guard, 6'4". They're booed in every arena they play in, a sign of their notoriety as the bad boys of basketball. Their lineup includes three all-stars and legendary coach Pat Riley. His defensive schemes causes opponents fits. His style of play transformed from his 80s Showtime Lakers to the blue-collar 90s Knicks. I think right now they are improving their offense. They have more diversification, which has given them better articulation. And by that, I mean they're not just relying on Ewan and John Starks. They're getting Charles Smith and Charles Oakley, as well as Harper, involved in the offense. It's a team that knows where it wants to go. And getting home court advantage is objective number one. I mean, if you're playing for something special, uh, you know, you know basically how many losses it's going to take to not get it. You know, you're talking in the 20s, you know, low 20s. You're going to have 20 losses or 22 losses, which is going to give you 60 wins, you hope. And, you know, but uh, you're not going to win every night in this league, but you have to put an emphasis on that. Many are calling this year's handshake rule actually the Derek Harper rule. You see, it was Harper in last year's playoffs that caused opposing guards fits with his relentless handshaking defense. Derek came out strong against the Spurs, but caught some early whistles. 
have to get back to playing the defense that, that we're capable of playing. You know, there was a lot of emphasis put on running this year throughout preseason, and we, we, we've been able to run and we've been able to score a few points from periodically, but I don't think uh, from, an, from a rebounding standpoint that we're playing the way we're capable of playing, and I know defensively we're not playing the way we're capable of playing. In the front court, relentless Charles Oakley takes care of the boards, and usually the opponent's top power forward. If you're a team well equipped, um, you got your solid eight, nine guys, and going to the playoff really strong on a good, on a good roll, anything can happen. You don't have to have the best seed, but as long as you're playing together as a team, that will count. But this team begins and ends with Patrick Ewing, a giant man, intimidating on the court, soft spoken off. Win as many ball games as we possibly can and try to go into the, the playoffs and the. On a, on a high. His only smile when this reporter showed him a pair of his Patrick Ewing shoes.